There's a time for everything under the sun. There's a time to laugh and a time to cry. There's a time to work and a time to rest. There's a time to live and there's time to die. Now, as a Christian, there is a time for you to read the word and build your understanding and knowledge of the things of God and the ways of God. There's a time to pray and a time to serve. But what I'd like to talk to you about is when it's time to fight. Because there will come a day, there will come a season when you will have to fight. And this fight could be for your family, it could be a fight for your health, or a fight to be set free from sin. Whatever it is, sooner or later you will find yourself in the middle of a fight. Now, when problems arise, when battles are before us, when we experience spiritual warfare, the Word of God has to be a source of constant reassurance to us. It must be that which ignites the fire in our faith. It must kickstart your hope and belief so that regardless of what you're facing, despite the size of the enemy, despite whatever is taking place in our lives, we have a divine and heavenly insurance policy, which is the Word of God. We're backed by angelic forces that come to our aid when we shout the name of Jesus in desperate need of help. We have security in our Father's faithfulness. He has never lost a battle. He has never been defeated, nor can He ever be defeated. But as His children, we should always be prepared. We should always be ready. Ephesians 6 verse 13 says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. I would like to take a moment to deconstruct this verse and what it means to us as children of God. The Bible says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. The first thing to notice is that this is an instruction we're told to take up the whole armor of God. It's not a question of whether you can or cannot take this up. No, it's clear instruction. This is something you need to do. The second thing is, you only need armor if you are in a war. You only need armor in battle. You only need armor when there is an opposing force coming against you. And when the Bible says the whole armor, this says to me that there are multiple parts that need to be taken up. Anything than the whole armor would leave you vulnerable. So it's important we follow this instruction and not only take up parts of the armor, but the whole armor of God. Now, the second part of this verse says that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. This statement has a level of certainty to it. You need to take up the whole armor of God so that you can withstand in the evil day. Now, in this part of the verse, I get the impression that the Bible is warning us. The Bible is warning us that there will be an evil day, a day when we'll have to fight the forces of evil. And the forces of evil can attack in many forms. However, if we are wearing the whole armor of God, then we will be able to withstand anything the devil aims in our direction. Now that we have a better understanding of this verse, I want to encourage you and rally you up. Yes, you are in a war. If you are a true disciple of Christ, you will be at war. You will be at war against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now, in these few moments, I want to remind you that the word is central to your defense stance, as well as your offensive stance as a Christian. So when you face the evil day, remember 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 3, but the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. When you face the evil day, Remember Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, He is the one who goes with you. 
He will not leave you nor forsake you. When you face that evil day, Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. So be encouraged, child of God. Do not fear when evil comes against you. The Lord is with you, and the promises of God should give you the confidence to be bold in the face of evil. I do not believe that anyone can be a doer of God's word without being challenged by it. God's word has to challenge you. And it will challenge you when you really try and put it into action. It tells you to pray without ceasing. That's challenging. We all know how busy our lives are, but in order to be a doer of the word, you need to pray without ceasing. The word tells you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's challenging because some people will test you. They'll test your patience. They will test your character. But God's word also tells you to be long suffering and slow to anger. Do you see what I mean? The good fight of faith, it involves being changed and challenged by the word of God. And I would venture to say, if you're not being challenged by the word of the Lord, then you are probably cherry picking the parts you do like, the promises that make you feel good and protected over the word of God in its entirety, especially when it comes to your character. So pray, saints, pray that you would be a doer of the word. So how do we find the strength to stand? Where do we find the strength? In those times where I think I have gone as far as I can, I tell myself, Psalm 46 verse 1, God is my refuge and my strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, I will not fear. Proverbs 18 verse 10, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Nehemiah 8 verse 10. Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Isaiah 41 verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. 